Tell me what you think is going on in preaching today. There's a lot of discussion of what's going, what's going on in, in, in African-American preaching today. What's going on? I, I don't want to be caustic. I don't want to be accusatory. I don't want to even be hypercritical. Uh, I'm concerned about it. Now, let me say this. I am unapologetically a child of the 60s. Mm-hmm. So I cut my teeth on a certain kind of preaching and I hold all preaching to that standard. I am concerned that a lot of the preaching is not theological um, in the sense that it does honor to the tradition. I never forget. <laughs> this is funny, but it makes the point. I was talking to a young preacher about reading the fathers. He said, oh yeah, like, you know, Bishop Charles Harrison Mason, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like Dad Mason, and he called another one, old preacher, and another devil. I said, no. <laughs> I mean the fathers. <laughs> they don't even know. They don't even know. Their, their, their reference list stops about 1970, if not 90. They know the current. Here's the other thing. They compare themselves among themselves. Mm-hmm. See, when you and I, you, one of the stories I remember is you telling about Dr. in Chicago, Curry. Yeah, L.K. Curry. L.K. Curry yeah. at that funeral of your friend. Yes. See, when we were growing up, we looked to those older men. We ain't talk about each other. <laughs> we knew we couldn't preach. <laughs> <laughs> we look to those fathers, those giants. This generation doesn't. They don't, they don't know them and don't feel the need to. Because they talk among themselves. <laughs> don't laugh, right? <laughs> is, is that, in the words of Michael Tyson, that's ludicrous. How do you do that? What are you going to learn? What are you going to give each other? Wow. My well is this deep, your well is that deep. What are we going to drink? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody got to go to a deeper well. Oh. <laughs> I'm through. <laughs> you going to get me, see the one chance I get to be on here and I done messed up now. <laughs> but I'm, somebody has to go to a deeper well. This is where we're drinking, right? <laughs> Doc, 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 you preach that doc. <laughs> like go, both of you, go sit down. Both of you. Somebody done preached that text for 2,000 years. And they have no idea. They don't know Chrysostom. They don't know Augustine. They don't know Hippo. They don't know nothing. They don't know where Hippo is. They don't, they don't know the fathers. They don't know Julia of Norwich. They don't know them. And they're all right with it. You know, Dr. Taylor had this great line. Dr. Taylor was a funny guy. He and Dr. Proctor could be funny in a dry kind of way. This preacher was doing something real foolish and somebody brought it to Dr. Taylor's attention. Dr. Taylor looked over at him, looked back and said, you can be so happy when you don't know. (laughs) That sums it up. When you don't know, you, you can be doing something real stupid and think you're looking great. That's right. You can be so happy when you don't know. And that's what I think sometimes happens. So when I listen to a lot of modern preaching, um, I just wonder, what, what, what are they drinking from? Mm. What well, what stream, what's feeding them? Mm. It can't just be their peers. You know, I've listened to your to the interviews. Man, you listen to Freddie Haynes, listen to Jeffrey. You know, you're gonna have F. Bruce on in a little while. Doc Branch, those guys. Every one of us will talk about those men before us. We didn't drink from each other's well. Mm-hmm. You do that? No. We were all trying to go to the well. We were all trying to drink from something that was flowing, that we sensed was deep. And that's my concern about where preaching is today.